Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. You know, I feel like Mr. Carlson from WKRP in Cincinnati when he said, As God is my witness, I thought turkeys could fly. Well, similarly, I really had no idea I'd be getting as many processed images as I've been getting. So I really owe an apology to those of you that were trying to send me an image overnight and got it bounced because my email was full. So uh, my apologies for that. I got that fixed. So if you got a bounce notice, you could resend your image. I should be able to receive it now. Um, also, I had mentioned in yesterday's video that in today's video, I'll look at all the images I received yesterday. Well, I received so many yesterday, I really can't fit them all in one video. So we're gonna do part of them in this video. Later today, or very early tomorrow, I'll do another video where I'll do some more, and I'll keep chugging away until by the end of the week we have them all done. And I am going to look at everyone's video. Now with that said, I've been receiving so many, so maybe I misplaced one or misfiled one, so if I don't get to your image, uh, my apologies, I'm doing my best to make sure I don't lose one along the line because I have to open the email, I have to save the image to a folder, I have to import the images into Lightroom, we're looking at Lightroom to see them, and then I have to print the email so I know what you did, I have to sort things so I'm looking at the image and talking about the correct image, so something's bound to get screwed up because I'm involved. So, so I apologize if I miss your image for some reason. Now, many of you, well, not many of you, some of you have sent me more than one image, two, three, even four images, like versions of the image. In those cases, I just took the one that was my favorite. I'm not going to show all of them. I'm, I just have too many. So I took the one of your image, whatever, like one person sent me four versions of the image. I took my favorite, and that's the one I'll be showing. And similarly, if you sent me more than one, I did the same with yours as well. So that's how we're going to work going forward. And then we're going to change next week. Uh, one more thing I want to mention, bear with me. I'm sorry it's taken so long. Um, at almost every video I put on YouTube in the description below it, I mention uh, if you could do something to help support the free videos I do. I rarely ever ask for your support. Uh, but if you could, in the description below this video, there'll be a link. If you could click on that, there's various ways you could support the free videos I do on YouTube and the free articles and things that are on my website. Um, I don't, as many of you know, I don't accept like paid uh, reviews and things like that. I just want to try to keep everything as free as possible and as unbiased as possible. So if you click that link, you could make a donation. You could buy something from my marketplace. I am an affiliate for some companies and I'm upfront about my affiliations. You could read my code of ethics statement. And if you could buy, purchase something from one of my affiliates, I would make a commission on it as well. So if you could help me out, I really would appreciate it. Now let's get going without further ado. Now excuse the shuffling of the paper because as I mentioned, I have printed emails. So I'm going to read uh, what the person has written to me, uh, what they did to the image. This first one is from Kent Kettering. He mentions that he uses Photoshop CC and Lightroom CC. And on this image, he used seven curves layers and one color fill layer. That's pretty impressive right there. This is from Bill Hansel. Um, let's see, uh, he used Photoshop CC, DxO Viewpoint 3, Topaz Clarity, Topaz Impression. Um, he used a preset he mentions in, in Topaz Impression that he thinks added some depth to the image. And he used Nick Viveza. And I would agree that has a lot of depth to this image. This next one is CJ Ford, and CJ didn't tell me what he did uh, or what processing he used, but you could see he cropped it, and I'm not sure what applications he used to process it. This is Ed Davis. Um, he opened Photoshop Raw, contrast down, whites up, clarity down, fully down, duplicated file as a smart layer, he used Nick Viveza, added structure to the grass in the post. He went into on one. He uh, he uh, color adjusts to the grass, uh, filter sunshine to sky only, color enhance blue to sky, paintbrush, paint perfect brush 
in clouds and water to introduce sunset colors. Uh, he went into FX, staff collection, all bright, but removed textured layer, dark and center post and seawall. He used the LUT Dark Knight. Uh, Nick Color FX Pro 4, Indian Summer 2, Strong Red, which is one of my favorite effects in Color FX Pro 4. Uh, added control points to warm up the grass. And then in Photoshop, he masked the top layer to bring back some color and grass. And he used a brush at 15%. Um, he forgot to straighten the horizon, he mentions, but he says mistakes are mistakes, part of learning, and he's right. So that's Ed Davis's. Very cool. A lot of work done on that. This is uh, Harry. You could see it's smaller, 690 by 427. If you could send them with a 2,000 pixels on the long edge, uh, that would um, help everyone see them a little better. Um, let's see. He uh, do, He's using On One Photo and Luminar Flex. Uh, he did pretty much the basic um, corrections in Lightroom or adjustments in Lightroom. Um, and, you know, that's pretty cool. Pretty dramatic image. This is Ian Clark. Uh, it didn't tell me what he did to it, but you can see, very impressive, very cool. You know, I should add too, part of the reason why I picked this image, I thought this image was particularly difficult to process, uh, in my opinion. So that's one of the reasons why I picked it. And I was interested to see everyone's version of it. And you could see that we're getting a lot of variety, which is really cool. This is uh, Jack. You could see he did a mirror kind of flip of it. Um, uh, let's see, curve, selected spot and bright spot, color balance, your photos. Uh, let's see, he used uh, mostly Nick, he said. Um, sorry, uh, define auto settings. There's so many that I pre did pre-read these emails, but there's so many that I forget, you know. Viveza, he used Viveza, that's from Nick, to darken the sky, color effects, sunrise, sunset preset, dial, dialed back 45%, flipped the image horizontally because uh, he liked the angle of the post better and uh, like the left to right triangle that it produced. So pretty cool. The next is Moshi Kiter. I, I should add too, I mentioned in the last video, I will mispronounce your name. I'm sorry, I don't do it on purpose. It's just my mouth doesn't work right. Um, Lightroom, auto, clarity, dehaze, vibrance, the last three by small amounts. Used Adobe Color Vivid, aligned horizon. Uh, Photoshop, gradient map from yellow to blue. Uh, Color Effects Pro from Nick Collection, Tonal Contrast, po Pro Contrast, and Vignette. Very cool rendition. This is from Gene Handwork. Uh, Luminar 3. I work to get the colors that I seen in the sky near my beach in the early morning. So that's kind of cool. Kind of made it your own. This is John Beasley. John didn't tell me what uh, they did or what programs they used, but it's pretty cool. I like the border on that one. That's pretty cool. This is Ed Lambright. Uh, he reset my file, which it should have been reset as it was, but um, except it just had some maybe camera defaults in there. I uh, he used auto uh, in Lightroom, auto tone, I assume. Uh, he brought the contrast up a little bit after doing that. He brought highlights all the way down and shadows all the way up to the right. Uh, adjusted whites and blacks, darken the sky with the gradient tool, painted in painted the waves in the center of the photo with highlights, turned down to bring in more detail, finally adjusted the luminous uh, and saturation of the aqua, uh, luminosity, I think he meant, and saturation of the aqua to add some drama to the clouds, adjusted the clarity, vibrance, and saturation up a little bit, and he added about plus seven of dehaze to bring up the overall contrast, and he says it took about five minutes, and that's pretty cool. This is Martin Paul. Um, let's see. He used uh, DxO Photo Lab version 2.11. Uh, it's a bit difficult to explain things in DxO. Um, and um, English isn't his first language, so he did the best he could uh, to explain what he did. Um, he did, you know, basically a really cool uh, rendition of the image with that application. Uh, Martin Cooper uh, used Lightroom CC. He pulled back highlights and opened up shadows, adjusted whites and blacks, split tone with warm highlights and cool shadows, radial filter to reduce exposure outside the central bright area, adjustment, adjustment brush to increase exposure and add warm tone to the water and cloud highlight areas and foreground grass. So I think he meant in here, in here, in here, in here, and right in here. 
pretty cool. This is Peter Picklin. Hopefully I said that right. Uh, used Lightroom 5, um, tone curve, uh, added the, you know, lazy S setting in the tone curve to get contrast. Used the split tone can uh, panel to add a hint of magenta to the sky and water. Um, Brighten parts of the clouds, add a little contrast to bring the overall detail to them, some clarity and sharpening. Let's see. He wrote a lot, so apparently, uh, so I should say, excuse me for kind of bumbling through it. Uh, he had some of uh, the lighter grass tops, uh, I think with a brush. He doesn't say, but I assume that's with. So that's his edit. Pretty cool. This is Lee Steiner. Um, Process to non-one, uh, 2019, uh, local adjustments to color the sky. Um, went to Luminar Flex for the Starburst. This is Thomas Alloway, uh, used Photolumer 3, um, then imported to Affinity Beta 3. Uh, duplicated the background layer, layer into levels to adjust the white and black points. Selective colors to enhance the foreground, the grass. Curves adjustment as shape to increase contrast, and finally the unshop mask for the final output. Uh, saved a JPEG with max quality. So pretty cool. I like it. This one's Randy Vachi. And let's see, Soli Lightroom. Uh, initially, I did this in color mode, but he didn't like it. So in black and white, the weather elements jumped out in contrast in the scene. A lot of people have been saying that, that this scene just kind of scream black and white to them and i and i don't disagree it's very cool um let's see the radio filter to open up shadows and the post a bit brush adjustment tool was used to add the light rays the rays of light coming from behind the clouds these light lines of light so it's pretty cool and again i apologize i'm kind of overviewing everything uh roger new uh nurse Tweaked in Adobe Camera Raw and Photoshop. And that's what he wrote. This is Ron Kutz. Um, let's see. Basic edits were done in Lightroom. Uh, just the standard edits. Then he sent it to Luminar 3 to give it a little more punch. He used the AI enhancer and the microstructure tone. Image radiance filters uh, on the sky. Adjust bit gradient filter. All that was in uh, Luminar 3. Then he sent it into Photoshop, used Nick Collection color effects, added brilliance and warmth, the detail extractor, and pro contrast plus a vignette. And finally, he finished it with a color grade overlay layer in Dodge and Burn, uh, I assume in Photoshop, and that's his result. So pretty cool right there. Uh, this is uh, Shlomo Eschet, um, Adobe Camera Raw. Uh, let's see, globally I changed the white balance to shade. Uh, lowered highlights to minus 100, shadows to plus 100, uh, increased vibrance to 25. Locally added graduated filters with lowered exposure and radio filter with increased exposure at the left of photo center. Um, applied Nick Collection Color Effects Pro via Photoshop. Uh, filter to fine tune the contrast and correct color cast and to add some vignetting. Next is Siavish. Sapantum um, used Adobe Camera Raw and Photoshop for editing, um, and he sent me multiple versions, a couple versions. This is the one I like the most. This I think he called it kind of Games of Thrones ish, so I like that. This is uh, Theory Roger. Um, let's see, that's it. He really didn't write anything of what he used, but there's a really uh, interesting version of that. I don't know why we zoomed out on that one. This is, um, it says up on the top left-hand corner, Wasim Abia. I think it's actually reversed. I think his first name's Abia and his last name's Wasim. I'm sorry if I screwed that up totally. Uh, didn't write what they did, but there's their version of the image. This is uh, Colin Gill. Um, didn't write what he did, but I like this version. Very cool. Uh, this is Hans Oberdyke. Um, let's see, used, uh, Luminar 3 totally, um, doesn't normally go for this kind of, uh, you know, dark, dramatic, cold look, 
but thought it fit this image. This is John Culetto. Uh, there's their edit. They didn't write what they used. This is William Wishman, and that's their edit. They didn't write what they used there. This is, is that zoomed out? No, okay. This is David uh, Machin, Machin. Sorry again, Dave, if I, <laughs> oh, he wrote, pronounced Machin. See, he helped me, he gave me a little pronunciation guide. Thank you, David. Um, let's see. Uh, he just cropped it because he thought it looked uh, more better to his eye, and that's cool. He made the grass look more weathered, um, snow bright. He made the br snow brighter. Basically, more winterized it. He, he, you know, he made it look more wintry. Um, he was at first going to make the sky look crunchy, but thought it looked better this way. So, really thought through his edit on that one. This is from uh, Martin Turner. Um, he imported in Adobe Lightroom Classic CC, left the photo as is, and sent into On One Photo Raw 2019. Developed adjustments, exposure up to, and he has all the settings. So he did the basic tone adjustments that you might do in in uh, the develop module of On One Photo Raw 2019. Then he sent it to effects. He had uh, dynamic contrast with about a 40% opacity. So the the as is with 40% opacity. Color enhance opacity about 30%. The glow filter with opacity about 20%. Sharpening filter about 10% opacity. The big softy vignette at 35% opacity. Back into Lightroom. Um, and let me see. I think that's really what he did. Yep. That's it. Pretty cool edit. This is Andre Brunchard. Um, just uh, their version, their kind of painterly version of the image. This is Craig Leggett. Uh, done entirely in Lightroom, and he has all his basic HSL transform and graduated sky settings. If you're interested in those, of course, anything I say, if you're interested, I didn't say the settings, and I said they have the settings there, you could email me, and I'll email you their settings. So there's Craig's. Was it Craig or Craig? Craig, sorry. And <laughs> I like this one. This is Stanley Greenberg. Uh, added a bird. Added a bird there. Uh, basic module on Lightroom, crop vignette, Photoshop. He eliminated one of the posts, uh, moved another, and added a heron. So there you go. This is uh, David Matthew. Um, let's see. Darken the lower left corner to lead the eye better. Gave a small exposure and contrast boost to the vertical pose as they were a bit too silhouette-like, he thought. Darken the top part of the sky to throw in contrast to lighter part near the horizon. Match this in the reflection. You can see right in here. And added a very small amount of exposure and contrast to the light part of the sky near the horizon. And he added the tiniest bit of a vignette. This is Lawrence Osborne. Uh, didn't write what they did or what they used, but that's their version of the image. This is John Wooten. John, um, basic editing camera raw, then into Photoshop, uh, did dynamic contrast. He used um, a late sunset LUT, a crisp warm LUT. Curves adjustment layer, layer, made a luminosity mask to boost the highlights. Made an orange radial gradient fill layer and placed over the sunset. Set it to overlay blend mode. Used blend if to protect the darks. Pasted mask from step three. Step three was that late sunset LUT he used. And made a fairly tight vignette to draw into the sunset. Use blend if on the vignette layer to protect the highlights. So there is that version. This is uh, Christian Tret. It's a little blurry, uh, but that's because it's the small size, 6 640 by 233. So I'm sure the real version of this isn't this blurry, but you can see... Um, Cropped it into more of a panoramic look. Uh, processed in on one. Uh, did tones and colors, sharpening of the grass, color adjustment, uh, sky filter to the sky, a vignette, dynamic contrast to the sky, natural, photo filter of the sky, blue. This is uh, Ren Thielen. And let's see, Ren. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. First edit in Lightroom, crop and straighten, added radio filter to enhance the sunset, and also larked the exposure. What does larked the exposure mean? 
younger people have to fill me in on that one. But I think the exposure looks lowered. So uh, edited in Topaz Studio, ran AI Clear and Exposure Enhanced. Uh, finished in on one with a big softy vignette, one of my favorite vignettes. So there is Ren's version of the image. This is Abul Fazil. Um, let's see, use Lightroom 6 um, to process the image. He did the basics, uh, you know, for tone, gave me his settings. Um, Use the brush to streak, uh, to uh, add some brightening on some of the foreground foliage, the grass in the foreground there, the medium contrast tone. And finally applied a preset, Surge Basic Drama, on the image. Any comment from you would be greatly appreciated. Well, that's my comment. Looks pretty cool. That's it. This is Bernie Baker. Um... He cropped it vertical, as you could see. He liked the starkness and simplicity of the crop. Uh, raised the temp, lowered the tint, and added a lot of clarity. Used a radio filter on the clouds and, the, and a graduated filter on the grass. The middle left still seems too light to me, but it could just be my eyesight. No, I think it looks pretty good. Looks pretty good, Bernie. This is uh, Zygmas Pakoras. Oh, again, I really destroyed your name. I'm sorry. Uh, this is um, all done with alien skin. He didn't say exactly what he used, but he used alien skin X4. And that's uh, Zygmus's version of my image. And I think it looks pretty cool. And that is all of them for this video. And as I mentioned at the top when I was really blabbing away, um, later today or early tomorrow, I'll have another video where I'll do more. Now, these aren't all the vi images that I received yesterday. Okay, they're maybe half of them. So if I didn't do yours yet and you sent it to me yesterday, it should be in the next video. So I apologize that this is getting strung out as much as it has been. Uh, but, you know, I thought turkeys could fly, really. So <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. I apologize again for the uh, clumsiness, for stumbling through all these so quickly. Uh, my apologies. Um, again, going forward next week, we're going to change it up a bit and hopefully it'll be much more enjoyable.